The One Year Bible, NRSV Catholic Edition, September 18th. Jeremiah chapter 5. Run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Look around and take note. Search its squares and see if you can find one person who acts justly and seeks truth, so that I may pardon Jerusalem. Although they say, As the Lord lives, yet they swear falsely. O Lord, do your eyes not look for truth? You have struck them, but they felt no anguish. You have consumed them, but they refused to take correction. They have made their faces harder than rock. They have refused to turn back. Then I said, These are only the poor. They have no sense, for they do not know the way of the Lord, the law of their God. Let them go to the rich and speak to them. Surely they know the way of the Lord, the law of their God. But they all alike had broken the yoke. They had burst the bonds. Therefore a lion from the forest shall kill them. A wolf from the desert shall destroy them. A leopard is watching against their cities. Everyone who goes out of them shall be torn in pieces, because their transgressions are many, and their apostasies are great. How can I pardon you? Your children have forsaken me, and have sworn by those who are no gods. When I fed them to the full, they committed adultery, and trooped to the houses of prostitutes. They were well-fed lusty stallions, each neighing for his neighbor's wife. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? And shall I not bring retribution on a nation such as this? Go up through her vine rows and destroy, but do not make a full end. Strip away her branches, for they are not the Lord's. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have been utterly faithless to me, says the Lord. They have spoken falsely of the Lord and have said, He will do nothing. No evil will come upon us, and we shall not see sword or famine. The prophets are nothing but wind, for the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done to them. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, Because they have spoken this word, I am now making my words in your mouth a fire, and this people would, and the fire shall devour them. I am going to bring upon you a nation from far away, O house of Israel, says the Lord. It is an enduring nation. It is an ancient nation a nation whose language you do not know, nor can you understand what they say. Their quiver is like an open tomb. All of them are mighty warriors. They shall eat up your harvest and your food. They shall eat up your sons and your daughters. They shall eat up your flocks and your herds. They shall eat up your vines and your fig trees. They shall destroy with the sword your fortified cities in which you've trusted. But even in those days, says the Lord, I will not make a full end of you. And when your people say, Why has the Lord our God done all these things to us? You shall say to them, As you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your land, so shall you serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob. Proclaim it in Judah. Hear this, O foolish and senseless people, who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Do you not tremble before me? I place the sand as a boundary for the sea, a perpetual barrier that it cannot pass. Though the waves toss, they cannot prevail. Though they roar, they cannot pass over it. But this people has a stubborn and rebellious heart. They have turned aside and gone away. They do not say in their hearts, Let us fear the Lord our God, who gives the rain in its season the autumn rain and the spring rain, and keeps for us the weeks appointed for the harvest. Your iniquities have turned these away, and your sins have deprived you of good. For scoundrels are found among my people. They take over the goods of others. Like fowlers they set a trap. They catch human beings. Like a cage full of birds, their houses are full of treachery. Therefore they have become great and rich. They have grown fat and sleek. They know no limits in deeds of wickedness. They do not judge with justice. And they do not defend the rights of the needy. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? And shall I not bring retribution on a nation such as this? An appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule as the prophets direct. My people love to have it so. But what will you do when the end comes?
Jeremiah chapter 6. Flee for safety, O children of Benjamin, from the midst of Jerusalem. Blow the trumpet in Tekoa, and raise a signal on Beth Hakarem, for evil looms out of the north and great destruction. I have likened daughter Zion to the loveliest pasture. Shepherds with their flocks shall come against her. They shall pitch their tents around her. They shall pasture all in their places. Prepare war against her. Up and let us attack at noon. Woe to us for the day declines, the shadows of the evening lengthen. Up and let us attack by night and destroy her palaces. For thus says the Lord of hosts, Cut down her trees, cast up a siege ramp against Jerusalem. This is the city that must be punished. There is nothing but oppression within her. As a well keeps its water fresh, so she keeps fresh with her wickedness. Violence and destruction are heard within her. Sickness and wounds are ever before me. Take warning, O Jerusalem, or I shall turn from you in disgust and make you a desolation, an uninhabited land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Glean thoroughly as a vine the remnant of Israel. Like a grape gatherer, pass your hand again over its branches. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? See, their ears are closed, they cannot listen. The word of the Lord is to them an object of scorn. They take no pleasure in it. But I am full of the wrath of the Lord. I am weary of holding it in. Pour it out on the children in the street, and on the gatherings of young men as well. Both husband and wife shall be taken, the old folk and the very aged. Their houses shall be turned over to others, their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord. For from the least to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for unjust gain. And from the prophet to the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have treated the wound of my people carelessly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. They acted shamefully. They committed abomination. Yet they were not ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore they shall fall among those who fall. At the time that I punish them, they shall be overthrown, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand at the crossroads and look, and ask for the ancient paths where the good way lies, and walk in it and find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk in it. Also, I raised up sentinels for you. Give heed to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not give heed. Therefore hear, O nations, and know, O congregation, what will happen to them. Hear, O earth, I am going to bring disaster on this people, the fruit of their schemes, because they have not given heed to my words. And as for my teaching, they have rejected it. Of what use to me is frankincense that comes from Sheba, or sweet cane from a distant land? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor are your sacrifices pleasing to me. Therefore thus says the Lord, See, I am laying before this people stumbling blocks against which they shall stumble. Parents and children together, neighbor and friend shall perish. Thus says the Lord, See, a people is coming from the land of the north. A great nation is stirring from the farthest parts of the earth. They grasp the bow and the javelin. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their sound is like the roaring sea. They ride on horses, equipped like a warrior for battle against you, O daughter of Zion. We have heard news of them. Our hands fall helpless. Anguish has taken hold of us, pain as of a woman in labor. Do not go out into the field or walk on the road, for the enemy has a sword, and terror is on every side. O oh, my poor people, put on sackcloth and roll in ashes. Make mourning as for an only child, most bitter lamentation, for suddenly the destroyer will come upon us. I have made you a tester and a refiner among my people, so that you may know and test their ways. They are all stubbornly rebellious, going about with slanders. They are bronze and iron, all of them act corruptly. The bellows blow fiercely. The lead is consumed by the fire. In vain the refining goes on, for the wicked are not removed. They are called rejected silver, for the Lord has rejected them. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 I said to myself, Come, I will make a test of pleasure. Enjoy yourself. But again, this also was vanity. 
I said of laughter, it is mad, and of pleasure, what use is it? I searched with my mind how to cheer my body with wine, my mind still guiding me with wisdom, and how to lay hold on folly, until I might see what was good for mortals to do under heaven during the few days of their life. I made great works. I built houses and planted vineyards for myself. I made myself gardens and parks, and planted in them all kinds of fruit trees. I made myself pools from which to water the forest of growing trees. I bought male and female slaves, and had slaves who were born in my house. I also had great possessions of herds and flocks, more than any who had been before me in Jerusalem. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the treasures of kings and of provinces. I got singers, both men and women, and delights of the flesh and many concubines. So I became great and surpassed all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I kept my heart from no pleasure, for my heart found pleasure in all my toil, and this was my reward for all of my toil. Then I considered all that my hands had done and the toil I had spent in doing it. And again, all was vanity and a chasing after the wind, and there was nothing to be gained under the sun. So I turned to consider wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the one do who comes after the king? Only what has already been done. Then I saw that wisdom excels folly as light excels darkness. The wise have eyes in their head, but the fools walk in darkness. Yet I perceive that the same fate befalls all of them. Then I said to myself, What happens to the fool will happen to me also. Why then have I been so very wise? And I said to myself that this also is vanity. For there is no enduring remembrance of the wise or the fools, seeing that in the days to come all will have been long forgotten. How can the wise die just like the fools? So I hated life, because what is done under the sun was grievous to me, for all is vanity and a chasing after the wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish. Yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all of the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. There is nothing better for mortals than to eat and drink and find enjoyment in their toil. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God. For apart from Him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? For to the one who pleases God, gives him wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he gives the work of gathering and heaping only to give to one who pleases God. This also is vanity and a chasing after the wind. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me. I feel a divine jealousy for you. For I promised you in marriage to one husband, to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that, as the serpent deceived Eve by its cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one that we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one that you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you submit to it readily enough. I think that I am not in the least inferior to these super-apostles. I may be untrained in speech, but not in knowledge. Certainly in every way and in all things we have made this evident to you. Did I commit a sin by humbling myself so that you might be exalted? Because I proclaimed God's good news to you free of charge, I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and was in need, I did not burden anyone. 
for my needs were supplied by the friends who came from Macedonia. So I refrained and will continue to refrain from burdening you in any way. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boast of mine will not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows that I do. And what I do, I will also continue to do in order to deny an opportunity to those who want an opportunity to be recognized as our equals in what they boast about. For such boasters are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is not strange that his ministers also disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness, and their end will match their deeds. Thanks for joining us for today's reading of the One Year Bible. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe to the Flame Keepers YouTube channel. Also, let us know your thoughts about today's reading by leaving us a comment below.